If you or a family member have been hurt because of the careless actions of another person, call Walker Texas Lawyer. They'll work to get you the financial compensation and justice you deserve. They have 40 years of experience, and you don't pay unless you win. Call 713-881-9653 today for a consultation or go to walkertexaslawyer.com. Oh, great. What have you done now? Broadcasting live from Houston, Texas, and around the world. And around the world. TV host, best-selling author, and radio personality Brad Gilmore brings you a collection of conversations with stars from movies. Matthew McConaughey. Brad Gilmore. Mark Wahlberg. Hey, how are you? The legendary Mr. Christopher Lloyd. Christopher, how are we doing? I'm doing good. Great introduction. <laughs> Television. Jimmy Fallon joins us this morning. Jimmy, how you doing, my friend? Good morning. Thank you so much, Brad, for having me. I appreciate this, bud. Kelly Ripa. Brad, thank you for having me. Comedy. Jay Leno joins us. Jay, how you doing? Hey, Brad, what's going on? Chris Tucker is in the building. Chris Tucker, good morning to you. Hey, Brad, good morning to you. How are you? Gabriel Fluffy Iglesias. Good morning. Music. Lola Monroe. Thank you. Thank you for having me. The legendary front man of ACDC, Brian Johnson, joins us right now. Brian, how you doing? Good morning, Brad. What lucky to talk to me. Funny lad. Grammy Award winner Maya joins us. How are you? And more. And more. This is The Collection. collection. Now Now your host, host, The the Boat, Brad Brad Gilmore. Gilmore. Welcome inside the Hall of Fame. I'm Booker T, six-time world champ, two-time Hall of Famer. Got my man Brad Gilmore here, as always. And we told you guys, this week's five minutes of fame was going to be, oh, yes, off the chains, because we got the one and only former NXT woman champion, Roxanne Perez, how you doing? I'm good. How are you? <laughs> you know, you're starting there. I got to give you a big, big. <laughs> it ain't like it was when you was at Reality of Wrestling, where you know you just, you know, get, you know, scolded for not being on time for your matches. <laughs> and stuff. <laughs> you, and I I you, calling the sh- you calling the shots now? You know, so I. <laughs> but uh, I want to thank you for stepping aside there. Five minutes of fame, giving, giving us a little bit of time because you have had a meteoric rise in the WWE NXT program. Um, so let's just get right into it. What's been the biggest um, adjustment from coming from, you know, the independent scene, working at Reality of Wrestling, being the first ROH woman champion? What's been the biggest adjustment? Uh, probably the schedule for sure. Because uh, obviously, like when I was coming to train at at your place, I was still in school. So um, I was kind of doing school. And then on the weekends or whenever I had a break, I would get on the Greyhound, travel to your place to train. But now it's like every single day, it's nonstop, 24-7. When they said 365, like it's for real. Like you're always on the go, training, gym um tuesdays we have the show so it's just like a never-ending cycle but i love it and i'm having a lot of fun you know coming from reality wrestling um going into nxt i guess my question for you and all of us were privileged to see your your early career and it was just cool to see you now on tv every time i turn on the tv i got book and roxanne it's like a row reunion but but for you Going into that stage, being where you came from a reality wrestling, the way that we have things set up, did it feel like you had been there before? Like you had like a really great training ground to then step into that stage? Honestly, yes. And I've told people this before, like coming from reality of wrestling, like, you know, it's not just another indie show. It's like you have like the cameras and the big setup and like uh, you got to hit your times and all of that. So, uh, Definitely coming into NXT, I feel like if I didn't have that experience before, I would have just freaked out because I was like thrown into the deep end. Like, I remember Sean telling me, like, we're gonna throw you into the deep end, let's see if you sink or swim. And like, the I think within a couple weeks that I was there, I had to do like a live promo, I had a match, I had a backstage, and like, it was just like, go, 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 go that whole day. And Honestly, like I said, like I feel like if I if I hadn't done reality of wrestling, um, Ring of Honor, like I I would not have been so ready as I was. Yeah, I had the um the Global Wrestling Federation to get me ready for 
that next step in, in my career. And, and I remember, and that's my next question as far as, you know, when did you uh, finally realize, you know, you was there? Because I remember when I was in global, you know, I felt like I was a, just a wrestler that was on television. I was doing my thing, but then I got a chance to go to Japan and I was in the middle of the ring and these, these ladies came and they gave me a presento in, in the middle of the ring. And that means, you know, they was giving me a gift and I was like, wait, well, they know who I am? I'm like, well, oh, I'll, I'll, I'll be, oh, I'll, I'm that, I'm that guy. You know what I mean? So when, when did you have that aha moment where you was like, man, this is, this is really happening? Oh, I feel like I've had so many. Like I, I had a couple of those moments. Uh, I, I remember being at my tryout um, and like a lot of people there, like I remember Samoa Joe was there, uh, William Regal, and uh, I remember Steve Carino. All of them were like, oh yeah, we know who you are, like Roxy. And I was like, what? <laughs> like you guys, you guys know who I am. Like so many people there already knew of me. And it was like, wow, like that, that was like so crazy to me because obviously since I was 10 years old, my dream was to one day make it to the WWE. And I knew it wasn't going to be easy. I knew there were steps I had to take. Um, and then to finally get there and for them, like for my work to show so much that they already know who I am. And that was really, really crazy for me. Um, I, I think the other moment was when I won the championship, the NXT Women's Championship, and you were there, Booker. Um, and that was like a surreal moment because it was like, wow, like also I never thought that I would be winning the NXT Women's Championship and Booker T is commentating like my trainer. So, um, yeah, that was just crazy full circle moment. But I feel like I'm honestly I'm still having those moments. Yeah, awesome. Uh, you know what? It's funny that you actually say that because I, I am curious. Because okay, so you leave reality wrestling. It's like graduating from high school, right? You you leave high school. You're going to college or you're going to the pros, what have you? And you think you're not going to see your your high school math teacher <laughs> ever again. But then here you are in NXT and Booker gets the call that he's the new commentator. When you found that out, just from a just from a personal curiosity, were you like, oh crap, I gotta deal with this guy again? <laughs> or was it like, hell yeah, Book's here and like, yeah, he's really gonna be a great resource for me. Yeah, honestly, I think it was the second one. I was like, I remember uh being in, I think we were in film study and like uh the notification popped up on Twitter and I was like, this is fake. Like, this is probably an edit. And then Kevin messaged me and was like, guess what? And I was like, oh, no way. Like, Booker's going to be commentating there. Oh, <laughs> sorry. I don't know what happened there. Um, but yeah, I thought that that was going to be super cool because I remember, uh, what am I, I can't remember exactly what match it was, but um, I remember I would always say like, oh, like one of my like dream kind of things is for Booker to commentate one of my matches one day and then he did at Reality Wrestling and then now you're the commentator at NXT and I'm like wow this is pretty cool you know you just speak yeah. things into existence crazy <laughs> crazy I, I never thought I'd be sitting at that desk but I tell you I'm having a good time I, I really, <laughs> um, you know to get before I get you out of here one more question um, a question I pretty much ask everybody that step inside the five minutes of fame um, you know what what's going to be that ultimate you know, dream match, that ultimate WrestleMania dream match moment for you? Oh, that's hard. Um, who is it going to be with? WrestleMania dream match? Probably. Yeah, it was, it was, probably either Bailey or Becky. Um, they're my two favorite four horsewomen growing up. So I think that that would be super full circle. Um, I met them both as a kid, like as a wrestling fan, and to work with them now is really, really crazy. But like I said, it just goes to show, like you just put in the work and keep grinding and keep putting things into existence and it, it's all possible. Well, I'm going to tell you right now, um, you would definitely be sitting under the learning tree working with either of those two because Bailey has always been one of my, in my fave five. She's always been there. And Becky has definitely uh, proven over this last year to me how good she really is. She's, she stepped up and I call her, she's not just a man, she's, she's the general. She's the general in, that, in the middle of that square circle as far as I'm concerned. She's, she's just that good. So you would definitely learn, uh, uh, have, get a wealth of knowledge. You know, from either of those two ladies, but I just want to thank you for any any part any part. BT, oh, go ahead. real quick, I do have one more for for. Go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, it's a simple question. Simple question. 
Uh, Roxanne, are you ready for Oscar? Oh, I am wow. so ready. You know, I, I was thinking about this and like, you know, Keanu James gave me a big task. I have a big task ahead of me. Oscar, you know, Grand Slam champion, longest reigning NXT Women's champion, undefeated in NXT. But I think people tend to forget that I'm a prodigy. I'm the prodigy. And I, I've been grinding since I was 13 years old. I've been perfecting my craft so that one day when I made it to the WWE, I was performing at a mastery level to the likes of Asuka. So I think I'm ready. I think I'm so ready. All my life. Grinding all my life. Also <laughs> pay the price. Want a slice. Got to roll the dice. That's why I, all my life I've been grinding. Oh, yeah. <laughs> We got to get you up out of here, but we want to thank you for stepping inside the Hall of Fame, giving us a little bit of five minutes of fame. Uh, Roxanne Perez, y'all. God, hey, thank you for stepping inside. Appreciate you. Thank you for having me. Stick around, guys. You're in the Hall of Fame. We'll be back in a minute.